Hello, and thanks for checking out this video. I'm going to show you briefly how it is that I use R and RStudio and why I think those are useful. A little bit of tips on um, how to apply them, how to use them, and also how to get them installed on your computer. And I hope to um, also inspire some good or at least uh, reasonably functional uh, data management and uh, file structures. So thanks and enjoy. The first thing you're going to want to do to use R is to visit the uh, R project website. That's r-project.org. And on this website, you will find the options, the various options for downloading the statistical software. So this software um, is an incredibly active and very positive community. So you'll find a lot going on on Twitter and other websites. That's certainly worth checking out if you get into the use of this thing. But basically, all you'll need to do is find the latest version and download the file. It should install on your machine. Um, it should download easily and install. It's relatively light. So it shouldn't take up too much internet uh, data and it should uh, expand relatively quickly depending on your machine uh, that could go uh, slightly differently but it should should be relatively functional and work uh, just as I've described likewise you're going to want to download our studio so that you can follow the rest of this tutorial and in my case uh, since I'm on a Mac that will download like this, but basically you're just going to go to uh, rstudio.com. rstudio.com should work just fine, bring you to the various software that's available from them. Um, their products are rstudio IDE, that's an integrated development environment, in case you're interested. The rstudio IDE um, is available as a server or for a desktop program, that's the one we're going to be using and then you're gonna download our Studio Desktop and you can choose from various options from incredibly expensive to uh, very cheap or free. And we're gonna use the free our Studio Desktop uh, version. That's the one that, that I'm gonna be walking you through uh, in this uh, tutorial. So just go ahead and download that. Um, I'm on a Mac, as I said, so I'm gonna be, uh, I already have this installed, so I won't do it now, but it should, again, relatively easily install. And if not, uh, you can try to figure that out or get in touch for some ideas about how to get this thing to work. But install both of those on your machine so that you can follow the rest of the ideas that I present in this tutorial. Next, I want to talk about filing. So in order to use, in order to follow really the, the process of using these two tools, I think what's important is to think about how you file things on your machine. So I'm gonna show you how I do it, but I think it's worthwhile to take some time and think about how do you store files? How do you name them? Where do you put them? What directories do they go into? And how are those directories uh, organized so that you can find them? In the future. Give that a good long hard thought. I think that's very much worthwhile. On my machine everything is backed up not only in external um, across multiple computers and on an external hard drive but also uh, on Dropbox uh, as well as other online repositories that I use. Dropbox is the main one so I have a Dropbox account. All of these files are uh, stored online whenever I have internet connection. So I store lectures. I'll just show you my um, how I store things for lectures. So I have contributions, um, lectures, and everything related to lectures goes into this directory. So it's more or less static. I always have within the Dropbox folder, contributions, lectures, everything is stored below this point. And when we're teaching R, I have um, my RStudio project. I'll show you about that very soon, but the RStudio project 
is filed within this directory, I can always find it. It's in the sub, it's the subdirectory of lectures, and it doesn't get moved around. That's important because if if it gets moved around, it gets a little bit messy. So if you want to follow uh, this the the results of this tutorial and have them work out for you, try to think of a good filing structure. If you have one, fantastic, use it and put your R project that is your R Studio file. Put that into a directory where all of the related files can be found. So once you have RStudio R and RStudio installed and functioning on your computer, then you'll open a R project. That is, you'll open the RStudio uh, application and you'll see it looks something like this. You have four panels. This is the standard layout for RStudio. You may have different colors or uh, slightly different settings, but generally the four panels uh, are structured like this. And essentially what you've got is a, um, what you've got is a, um, R, an interface, two different places to interface with R on the, on the left-hand side. So you've got your, um, a place here on the upper left where you can um, write scripts, that is write files that you can then save. So uh, I've just opened an R file. Um, basically, when you choose this upper right hand, upper left hand most um, tab, you can find options to open various types of files. I'll open an R script. And here uh, is where, as I said, you can communicate with R directly. What we might do is load a library. So I'm going to uh, install packages and then I'll install the package chillr. Okay, I run that line and uh, I don't need to up, up install. I've got it already installed, so. And then um, install packages chillr and then library chillr. This is how I get um, get the information from the package into my local system. You can hit uh, command enter or you can hit cancel or you can hit um, run. There's this option here on the top run, which will run that line of code to run the line of code. And once I have library chillr installed, then I can do all sorts of things. Now the next panel, the lower left panel, that was all the upper left panel. This file, by the way, I could save. I could save it as test and I could um, it would always be automatically saved in the same directory as the RStudio project, as I said. That's why a filing structure is so important. I'm not going to save this to my desktop or anything. I'm going to save it as a sub, either in the same level or in a sub-level of this uh, RStudio project. I'm not going to save it right now. Down here in the lower left-hand corner, I've got my interface. So you can see the script that I've written so far. The, the lines of code that I've written so far, those are here. I'm seeing them run down here. And I can also run new code. So if I put a question mark, chill R, and I'm communicating with R, it's not in my stored, it's not in my saved file. I could also put it up here, right? So I can find that later, right? That I want to call a help file. And, <clears throat> I'm making a note to myself by using this hashtag, then I can, I know that it's not going to run as a kind of, it's not a command for the computer what to do, but it is uh, something that I can later read and I can understand what it does. So I've called this question mark chillr, and it's opened now in the lower left hand corner, you may have noticed, or lower right rather, you may have noticed that a help file opened. And here we get lots of information about the chillr package. And we also get some examples. These are quite nice because then whenever you run into a new function or a new library or new information on R, you can take some time and look at the examples and maybe run some of those to see um, what they do. So we can run this one, weather. I'll just, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go through the details of what it does, but I'm gonna run this weather, uh, this fix weather function and create an object called weather and um, now, in my in the continuing to show all the various functions in the upper right-hand corner of your 
our studio project or of mine as you're looking on, you'll see that in environment, I've got um, weather. I can see the object, I could look at it, I could even um, click on that and uh, look at it here. It's basically two two-part object here. Um, in the lower right hand corner again, as I said, everything gets stored within the same directory as the R project. In the lower right hand corner, um, what we've got are all of the files that are stored at this level or below. Here's a folder and there are more files uh, stored below this level. And I'll walk you into my directory again. Here you'll see that, um, that when I save this or when I open this R project, when I save this R project, it's located within this folder, as I said, and everything is there in the subfolder. It's also shown in that files section so I can easily access them while I have RStudio open. The file ends with .rproj. So that's the type of file. And when you open that, it just opens um, this um, interface for you. Here I'm opening it twice, so it can get confusing if you do that. Um, that's basically all there is to know about using R and RStudio, the very, very basics. So have a fantastic, um, or at least a manageable, functional, and relatively static file structure system, so a way that you file things that you always know how to find them again, and that they don't move around too much. Don't put them on a desktop, but keep them in a directory somewhere, and make sure that directory is, of course, backed up. Um, anything that you use with your RStudio project, any R files that are related to a project that are open within an RStudio R project, uh, make sure that those are stored in the same directory or in the subdirectory of the location of that particular R project. And that should be enough to get you started into the rest of the videos related to this one. So thanks very much. And I do hope that you enjoy using R. I think you've made a fantastic choice. If it's your first programming language, that's really lucky for you. Um, it's a fantastic community, really friendly people. Uh, relatively easy to get started, and you'll always find lots of other people to help you with uh, any issues that you have. I find that uh, since I've started using R, Google has become a big help file for R, issues with R. So uh, enjoy, and we look forward to talking to you again about other things related to R and R Studio.